33 degrees outside the window on 8th Street, 1031, and our weather forecast is calling for cloudy skies with a high temperature near 41 today. And then for tomorrow, slight chance of a shower, mainly after 3 p.m., then partly sunny. That's right, sunny, S-U-N-N-Y, and a high of 47 degrees. Again, 33 right now. We're pleased to be joined in the studio by the president and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital. That is John Alley as you listen to us on 92.1 WROI, WROIFM.com. Streaming audio live, RTC Channel 5 audio and soon to be video on RTC Channel 4. That's why Tim has stayed with us this morning. Hi, morning. Yep, yep, there he is. He's back again. Mm -hmm. John Alley, welcome. Good morning. Nice to have you with us. Hey, pleasure to be here. Board was in session kind of yesterday. Kind of a board meeting <laughs> yesterday. We moved it up a week because of some folks going to be gone next week. So kind of this, the December, January meeting was December data. Usually we don't have all the data in. We're trying to get everything in for the end of the year. Uh, so we did have a lot of financial information. We got a pretty preliminary report we could share with the board. Okay. About two or three adjustments we're trying to, to verify. Uh, Right now, probably going to show a slight loss for the year, about 150, 175,000, which I was predicting kind of a break-even year. So right. a little less than what we thought. Uh, wasn't a good year for the hospital. It, uh, you know, we're doing too good a job of making people well, which is what we're supposed to do. But we kind of we talked about it before. We kind of cycle every fourth year or so. We usually have a fairly bad year. The next three years picks up. So we. Just briefly discuss that. Uh, next month we'll have more details for the board okay. where we can finalize that December meeting. So we kind of just did a lot of general speaking of what's going on, what we think is going to happen, and, and what do we need to do as we move forward into 2017. And uh, you know, a lot of the discussion was on, uh, and even one of the listeners sent a note in, what's the repeal of Obamacare? What's going to happen to the hospital? Is it going to help it or hurt it? And I, at this point, it's almost too early to make that call because we don't know, one, what they're going to take out, and two, what they're going to replace it with. Historically, I'll have to say that it did benefit the hospital. Uh, you know, we had a reduction in our bad debts, a reduction in our compassionate care, because we had more folks with insurance. And you know, if I had to put a dollar amount to that, uh, we're probably looking four or $500,000 benefit to the hospital in 2016. If you listen to the rhetoric that's coming out of D.C. from both, you know, both different parties, you know, there is going to be change. We don't know what it is. My hope is that whatever they change will be fairly neutral as far as, you know, the, the reduction in payments or increase in payments. Um, you know, the comment was made that, uh, you know, President-elect Trump wants everybody in the country to have some sort of health insurance. Right. Um, great idea. You know, how do you do that and make it affordable? And uh, we've had some folks that have come in we've talked to that were, you know, got their new premiums for, you know, 2017. And uh, two or three says, I, I can't pay it anymore. It's gone so high, then, you know, under the Obamacare uh, method that I can't pay my premiums anymore. I got to drop my insurance. So we are hoping that those folks now will be kind of that group that can pick up in whatever new plan they come with and get back enrolled onto the system. So there is some payment for the services that we do. Uh, it's not going to happen overnight. Uh, you know, it, it's Congress, it's the Senate. Uh, it takes time for this stuff to move through. And even if they fast track it, you know, my, if you look at the crystal ball, which we all have and are all perfect, um, it's probably. Mine is not broken yet. No, mine no, isn't either. So, yeah, uh, so I'm guessing at best it's going to be a year. You know, if they make changes today before it's fully implemented, we're looking a year down the road. So, you know, it's those kind of things that, uh, you know, as a hospital administrator, you get a lot of sleep at night trying to figure out what's tomorrow going to bring and, and how we go to deal with these changes. And uh, I think that's part of the, the fun of the job is every day I come in, there is something new, something different. And whatever we did today is going to be changed for tomorrow. So we're, you know, we're monitoring that. But to come out and say, you know, definitely it's going to help, it's going to hurt. I don't think anybody can answer that right now until we get a little more details on exactly what they're wanting to take out and what they're wanting to put in its place. We had the opportunity to have a conversation this morning with Senator Joe Donnelly, and we were talking about this very thing, the Obamacare, and uh, he mentioned how many people in the state of Indiana are covered by it. And uh, he, too, wants to make sure that whatever we replace it with still gives those people the coverage that they need, especially if they have a pre-existing condition. Correct. Also talked with him about Medicare and the possibility of a Medicare voucher. And he is dead set against that because he figures Medicare is just right the way it is. And if you have a voucher system, then people are going to get confused and lost in terms of trying to figure out which health care is best for them. Right. And it, I mean, it's confusing now because you know, you've got traditional Medicare now, then you've got all the Medicare replacement plans. 
So, you know, we do a lot of counseling with folks when they're looking to make that transition, you know, into their retirement years. Do I go with traditional Medicare or do I go with replacement plan? And there's pros and cons on both plans. Uh, from purely a financial aspect on our side, on the hospital side, on the provider side, we like the traditional Medicare a lot better because as a cost-based entity, with, at the end of each year, we file kind of a tax return, lack of a better term, with Medicare. And they say, you know, what did it cost you as a hospital to provide benefits to all the Medicare beneficiaries? And our contract is they give us 1% over our cost. So we get cost plus 1%. So we go through all this gyration to, to get that. So at least we make 1% on that Medicare population. Which could make a difference. Wh which makes a difference. Sure. Uh, you know, that was one of the benefits of being a critical access hospital. That cost based is it actually increased, you know, your cash revenue for the facility. Well, once you get into the Medicare replacement plans, even though they're still a Medicare beneficiary, on our side it's considered a commercial insurance plan, so we don't have that cost-based reimbursement anymore. So on some procedures, uh, they'll say, well, you're, and they use our Medicare daily rate to pay us on the commercial side. The downside is at the end of the year, we have no catch up. You know, with Medicare, they either owe us some money or we owe them some. When they say, you know, here's what we've paid you, we get an interim payment, we owe you extra money, we didn't pay you enough in 2016, or they say, hey, we overpaid you because you were very efficient, you reduced your cost, so therefore, you know, we overpaid you. With the, the Medicare replacement plans, we don't have that luxury. So, you know, there's some, you know, I'll, I'll pick an ortho case, sometimes on, a, on an orthopedic case, if you have a Medicare replacement plan, we'll get $2,800 payment, and that's a total payment we get for that, but our cost is fifteen to 18000 Sure. Uh, because we don't have that cost settlement with them. And when you try to negotiate that into those plans, they don't want to do it, and if I'm on their side, I understand that. So I think we need to tweak and work on that a little bit. You know, I've, I've long said what we ought to be able to do, if you're a Medicare beneficiary and choose to opt into a, a replacement plan, allow me to still put you on my cost report for my cost-based reimbursement and work through that. So I think there's, uh, you know, goods and bads on everything. Um, if you're a healthy senior, I think the replacement plan is wonderful. If you have a lot of medical issues, you might want to look because it actually long term might be cheaper with a traditional Medicare plan than it is with the replacement. And it's individualized, so you can't globally say how this works. You just need to sit down and look at your health needs, what you think they're going to be. Sit down with your insurance agent and have them help you through this to say, if I do have a lot of claims, how is this going to be paid? Um, it's a complicated process, and unfortunately, you know, it ought to be a simple process how we take care of ourselves with our health insurance and the payment, and it's not. And uh, it gets a little more complicated every year, and it's it's a game. Uh, you know, my proponent ever since I've been in healthcare is pay me what I bill you. Right. Don't, don't I don't shouldn't have to give discounts to everybody. And as we talk, you know. Right now, we're writing off around 60% of every dollar we bill is a discount we have to give to somebody. So we keep inflating our prices to help make our bottom line because of the discounts we give. Well, then on the other side, if I raise my rates, then you say, well, I want a bigger discount. So we're constantly chasing ourselves. And it's the people caught in the middle of those who don't have insurance. You know, they're self-insured and all of a sudden they're coming in saying, I got a thousand dollar bill. Well, if everybody paid me exactly what we billed them, your bill instead of a thousand dollars would be four hundred dollars, sure. which is much more reasonable. And uh, you know, if they, if they just put me in charge of all the health care, we'd fix this. I'm guessing. Uh, we finally got an answer. Yeah, finally got an finally answer. Got what got the an solution answer. That's is? Right. That's right. But it's you know, it's very complicated, and uh, you know, it's it's something that's taken 50, 60 years to get to this complicated point. It can't be fixed overnight. It's going to take time to fix this, and I think that's the hard part. Everyone wants an instant solution to it not going to be one. It, it's going to take a lot of time. A lot of people need to think long term, not just their, you know, whether I'm a Republican or a Democrat. Don't worry about the political part. What's best for the people, what's best for our country, and figure out how to fix this health care dilemma. Has Medicaid, Medi Medicaid been affected by any of this? A little bit of Medicaid. Um, again, the state of Indiana has been fairly proactive with that, and I, I've never been a big proponent of it, but I do the concept I like, it's, it's just hard to swallow, but right now the, all the hospitals are subsidizing the state Medicaid program. So we get charged an assessment fee every month that we pay into the state. They pull that money together and then they try to disperse it back to all the hospitals 
on an equitable basis. So they're bringing the Medicaid rate, what they're paying, up close to the Medicare rate. So, you know, some hospitals are, are winners in the state in that what they're paying out is less than what they're getting back. But we have a few hospitals in the state that what their assessment fee they're paying is less than they're getting the additional reimbursement. So, you know, they're probably crying a little more than the rest of us. But, you know, as we look what we're doing, we've all, most all of us have benefited from it. It's just kind of hard to, every month, you know, you send a, a check to the state of Indiana for $100,000 you know, to help subsidize the Medicaid program. But again, we need to take care of the folks. We've got to figure out a solution to this problem. Uh, if it was an easy solution, I think we'd been there by now. It's just sure. going to take some time and common sense, I think, to get there. Budgets are in for 2017. Budgets are in. Um, you know, they'll be loaded in the system. Well, they should be loaded now, and we'll start really monitoring that fairly closely. Uh, you know, again, 2016, not a good year for us. Uh, we're hoping 2017 we see a turnaround in that, so we're just going to monitor, again, our expenses very closely. As we see a dip in revenue, then we got to cut our expenses sure. to match that so we can, you know, uh, got to get back on that black side for 2017. Any thoughts about 2017 in terms of the hospital itself and uh, improvements or changes we'd like to make? Right now, I think we've got a lot of just little nitpicky things. You know, the, the building's not a new building, so we're starting to see, you know, some minor areas where... 50,000 here, you know, minor 50, 60,000, but you know, when you consider the, the total cost of exactly. that stuff, but we're starting to see some of the infrastructure just wear out. And you know, our goal is not let it totally go down, but can we still ride it another month or two months and then you know, defer that expense as late in the year as we can. So we're monitoring those. Uh, all the capital requests come in through myself and the CFO. And uh, right now I've got quite a few on my desk. We're just kind of setting on them. Uh, they're not ir urgent or emergent needs. They're kind of, we really need to do this. So we try to prioritize those and, and what is the most important thing, move it to the top of the stack. Um, you know, patient care items absolutely come sure. to the top. And if there's other, you know, maintenance things or that's not a, a direct patient care, probably get a little less priority than some of the other stuff. But again, we want to try and monitor, build our cash again for another year. Nothing major that we see coming. Uh, you know, we're, again, you always have those emergencies that you never know what's going to break, what's going to go down. But I think we're, we've tried to be very proactive, keep in front of our maintenance on all of our equipment as we start seeing it getting it toward its end of life. You know, while it still has some value, trade-in value, we, we'll make that trade-in. So we get a little bit of our you know, money back on that trade-in and then we upgrade to whatever new equipment we need. We've talked about the financials for 2016. Overall, take a look at overall for Woodlawn, Woodlawn Hospital. Are you happy with where you are at this point in time? As a good administrator, I have to say no. Um, you know, we always want to do better. No matter how good you do, you want to do better. You strive to do better because the better we do, the more we can put back into the organization for the community. But if I, overall, I, I still think we're okay. Even though we had a loss for the year, uh, you know, that's something we have to learn from, move forward and not let it bog us down, be proactive as we move to 2017. But I guess, you know, if you kind of step back from the administrator role, I think we're doing okay. We're probably in the top 25% of the hospitals in the state as far as performance. Everybody I've talked to, this has been their down year. Uh, and nobody knows why. It just seems like, again, it goes in cycles. So, you know, we're okay, but I'm not happy. Uh, you know, I think if I ever get to the point that I'm happy, I should retire. Because, uh, you know, unless you're striving to improve, you know, you, you become stale. So you constantly got to be looking, what can we do better? What can we make better for our community? And it, once you stop that type of thought process, then to me, the organization really gets stagnant and there's some problems at that point. So, you know, our staff is very proactive. We, we meet, you know, at least every other week with all the leadership, all the directors. And this is some of the stuff we talk about. Uh, our last meeting was, what is your prediction for 2017? You know, because I wanted to hear what their thoughts were because that helps me then formulate a plan. And it was pretty interesting. I mean, everybody kind of had the same thought process. They were concerned about the change to the you know, Affordable Care Act. How's that going to affect us? Infrastructure changes. So they're thinking of what we need to do as an organization to really move us forward, make us very progressive, and still meet the needs of this community. And I, you know, staff does a wonderful job. They make me look really good. Well, patient satisfaction is still very high, John. Still very high. And, uh, you know, that's something that's... Uh, is going to become more important as we move forward. We're starting to get more and more information out of the lobbyists in D.C. that as we move forward into 2018, 2019, our payments that we receive from government agencies is going to be based upon those satisfaction scores. And it, that's the hard part. Uh, every year when we go back, we can look, November, December, our satisfaction scores drop 
for whatever reason. And we haven't changed anything. And then they back, bounce back up January, February, March. So, you know, it's just that seasonal disorder. Everybody's got other things on their mind. And, you know, all of a sudden they're in a the hospital. They don't want to be there. They don't there. want to be there. So when we call and say, how is your service? <laughs> right. They're grouchy. Sure. Um, so, but that's in the future. We, we know that's going to affect how we get paid. So we've got to change our thought process now more from that qu quantity into quality. We've got to do, and I think we do an excellent job on quality. And lots of times I get shocked. I'll see a comment and go, wow. You know, and so you start digging into it and you kind of find out, well, there was a lot of other circumstances with that particular patient, but they had a valid complaint and we need to address it. So I think we're going to start looking more and more on that quality endeavor uh, as we move forward because our payers are telling us, if you don't have high quality scores, we're going to penalize you. And, and it's, uh, you know, it can be up to, as we move, I think, to the 2020, 9% reduction in our payment if we don't meet certain quality standards. So, you know, we, we've got to ramp that up and, and get proactive with it. And, you know, it's not in effect until 2018. I said, I want us to be judged in 2017. Where would we be? Let's see what our quality scores are because if you wait to the last minute, you're going to fail. So we've been working very hard for 2017 to be under that same program and judging ourselves where do we fall to make sure we're going to be, you know, where we need to be as we move into the future. Interesting time to be in healthcare. It, it's it's <laughs> exciting time. You know, I get a lot of, are you interested in retiring yet? And I, I have to say no. It's fun. Um, now, give me six months. I, it might not be fun, but still having, I, I love what we do. I love the challenge of healthcare. It's, it's not a boring career. Uh, every day is different. Uh, you've got multiple different agencies giving you contradicting information that you have to do and you have to blend that all together so it's uh, still having a ball still having fun love working at Woodlawn uh, the people out there are just phenomenal and I think you know they, they've stepped up I've asked them step up your knowledge I, I need for you to be more proactive and they are doing it super ideas coming out of the staff and, and uh, all new folks come in my first comment is that I'd rather we try 99 times and fail than not to try at all because that 100th time is going to be that one thing that's going to make the difference. So uh, we, we try a lot of things. We've got a lot of lists with lines to it that not to do it again. But until you try that, you don't know whether that's going to make it better. It's going to improve things. So let's try them then move forward. John Alec, President and CEO of Woodlawn Hospital and Woodlawn Hospital, a very vital part of Fulton County and the surrounding area. So keep up the good work for 2017, John. Thank you. And it's, uh, like I say, it's not me, it's the staff. I've got tremendous people out there working, you know, the whole staff. They're very dedicated to the, the community, to our patients, our visitors, and to the organization. And it's just, uh, I, you know, proud to be a part of them. And uh, they make my life really easy. John Alley, thanks very much. Thank you.